Hey guys, today's video is a how-to video. On how to take these empty chemical shuttles and transform them into awesome compost making bioreactors. The idea for making bioreactors this way comes from David and Sue Johnson. I recommend you guys watching their video. I'll leave that in the comments below. The main difference is they're using rebar wire while we're using the shell of an RTK shuttle. We've built two bioreactors, the Johnson Sioux method way, but we preferred the RTK shuttle because we have more RTK shuttles and the shell's already made. We're also going to show you how to film. No, not, not this slow way that takes six to eight hours. The awesome way with a bobcat and a feed truck that you can fill three of them in two hours. All right, before we get started, let's talk about what we're going to need. You're going to need at least one empty chemical shuttle. You will need five PVC pipes that are five feet long and that are four inches in diameter, and you'll need holes every four inches on four different sides. You'll need at least one wooden crate that will fit your RTK sh shell and weed barrier mat. And lastly, in this particular video, I am going to show you how to do the double stack method. So if you are going to do the double stack method and make two uh, out of three shells, you're going to need the three empty RTK shuttles. You're going to need PVC pipe that is at least seven feet long, and you'll need 10 of those. And then you will also need two crates instead of just one. All right, let's get started. So first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're going to cut off this plastic piece right here. So once you get that cut off, you can come to the edge and unscrew these bolts and then pop those bars off the top there. Then after you get done with that, you come to the bottom and you're gonna unscrew those screws at the bottom of the RTK shuttle. Once you've got those screws off, you can pop the uh, metal cage off around there and then pull the bladder out. Okay, so once you get the bladder out, you're also going to want to take any of those signs off. Um, those signs are gonna restrict airflow and airflow is huge in these on these bioreactors. The dimensions on these chemical shuttle shells or cages is 41 inches high, uh, 40 inches wide, and 48 inches long. Uh, now that you got your shell, you're going to want to pick a pallet. When picking your pallet, make sure that you select a pallet like this, that the slats are fairly close together, um, not a pallet like this, uh, that the slats are further apart because you want something that is going to support the tubes that you're going to put in. The step after that we have is cutting out the center holes. Um, we don't have an exact science to this. What we do is we measure the center hole and make sure that that's in the center. We cut that one out. And then Frank uh, measures 10 inches from that center hole angled out towards the edges. We do it this way because we don't always have the same size of pallets. So we do it this way and then we take the cage and we make sure that that center hole is in the center of our cage and we screw the cage down. At this point, Frank has broken down three chemical shuttles, and so he has three empty cages from those shuttles. He'll take this one, and he'll cut out the center of this cage, and he'll take the top part and attach it to one of the other one, empty uh, cages that he has, and he'll take the bottom part, and he'll attach that to the other empty cage that he has. So now we'll have two extended uh, cages to make a taller bioreactor. To extend that, Frank's going to take zip ties and zip that, tie that together. Uh, after he gets it zip tied together, he takes a pair of channel lock pliers and pinches the bottom part down so that it is flat and he can take a drill and screw holes through those corners to get bolts into the edges there. Once they get that screwed in, they measure out the weed barrier mat. So in this video, you can't really see it well, but Frank's measuring out 14 feet on the weed barrier mat and he's cutting that out 
um, so that he can place the weed barrier mat on the inside of this new cage. To secure the weed barrier mat to the cage, we use zip ties. And so we zip tie uh, every square at the top and the bottom. And then in the center, we just skip every other one and put a, a zip tie every other one. Now we overlay the pallet with weed barrier mat and cut out the holes for the PVC pipe. Once the holes are cut out, Frank places the cage with the weed barrier mat over the top of the wood pallet and screws it down so it is nice and secure. Once you have everything in place, you take the bars from the very beginning that you took off the top of your uh, chemical shuttle and you use those bars to secure your PVC pipe so they don't move around once you fill. Once your bioreactor is ready to go, you need to pick out your material. We like to use finely ground oat hay. So we'll have this oat hay at 70%. We'll mix it with alfalfa hay and uh, we'll throw in a little bit of manure as we go along with the process. This is how you fill the bioreactor without a feed truck. It's a very time consuming process. Uh, I'm not gonna cover it in this video. If you wanna know how to do that, watch David Johnson's video uh, that I'm going to leave in the comments below. We used a loader tractor to load the feed truck. We did 650 pounds of oat hay and 280 pounds of alfalfa hay to fill our two bioreactors. Um, using a feed truck is great because it saves time, but also you're able to get the right amount of moisture because you want to keep the moisture content around 70% uh, on these bioreactors. Once you get that material mixed up uh, with the water in it, you should be able to squeeze your hand and watch a little bit of the water run out between your knuckles like that. Um, and then you just spend the rest of the time filling. Uh, these three bioreactors, it took us two hours because the feed truck broke down. Um, on the last two that were extended and taller, those bioreactors, I think, took between somewhere like an hour to, to an hour and a half. This is what the bioreactors look like when they are full. After 24 hours, you can pull your PVC pipes out of your bioreactors. This allows air to flow freely through the bioreactors and keeps your pile from going anaerobic. Once the tubes have been pulled from your bioreactors, you're going to need lids. We use one by four inch boards. The dimensions of the, bi uh, the lids for the bioreactors are 50 inches long by 42 inches. Um, we put the weed barrier mat over those boards and we staple them down and that's how we put our lids together. Now that your bioreactors are full, there's a few things that you need to do for maintenance. The first one and the most important one is water. The bioreactors need around a gallon of water a day. If it's going to be a hot, windy day like we get here in western Kansas, they'll need a little bit more than that. And since we did the double stack ones, we're adding a little bit more water to the double stack. So the way we measure our water is this. We take a garden hose and we take an empty milk container that's a gallon and we fill that and we time how long it takes to fill that milk container with the garden hose. It takes us about 30 seconds to fill the smaller ones and about 40 seconds to fill the bigger ones. And so overall for the day, it takes us about five to 10 minutes to fill these bioreactors each day. The next thing for your maintenance is adding in worms, but you gotta get your pile down to 80 degrees uh, to put in worms. We've noticed on our piles, our piles will get from anywhere to 120 to 150 degrees, depending on where it's at in the pile. So you got to wait for those things to cool down. Um, once they cool down to 80 degrees, you can add worms. 
So to finish this video, I actually went to my buddy John Nicewanger's for two reasons. One, I needed worms for our piles uh, so that I could put them in once we get down to the 80 degree mark. And I wanted to show you guys what the finished product looks like. John's been doing these bioreactors for the last few years. And so I thought I'd go there and get a video of what this stuff looks like once it's broken down uh, for a year. That concludes our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I had a blast uh, making it, so I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions or thoughts that you want to share, click on the comments below and leave those in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We have some other videos about bioreactors, and we're also in the process of putting together videos on rotational grazing, cover crops, cover crop management, and uh, soil health in general. So anyway, subscribe to our channel, check those things out, and um, thanks for watching.